There we are, Hearts Cruisers in 1955. And this is a film put together by my mother of several days on the yard, but she made it into a film to represent a turnaround day. And here you see the yard on a typical Saturday morning because you only had one turnaround day in the whole week in those days. And so during the week, the yard would be completely empty. But you'll notice that they did a lot of work on the garden because with Blake's boat yards, the idea was that any other Blake's boat could come in and moor up free of charge and have somewhere nice to spend the night. Here's last week's customers all beginning to appear. The Seven of Hearts was a very good little boat for fishermen. It was just a three berth boat. And they were very popular in those days. The forerunner of a lot of the fiberglass boats you see now. This was the King of Hearts, which was the, the sort of flagship in those days, a lovely boat for eight people. And that boat is still going, uh, having been completely rebuilt in lovely condition. Ted Dean, who you see here cleaning the hulls, he actually spent the war in the Merchant Navy and had three ships torpedoed under him, but still kept going. In the boat is Ray Claxton, who was the chief engineer. He used to work for Brook Marine in the war. And the young boy with him is Andy, who was one of the apprentices. We used to have three apprentices on the yard because it was a building yard. Ray Claxton was a very good engineer. He actually installed the first diesel engine in a hire boat in the Nave of Hearts in 1949. There's Cliffy, who was still around when my father died. He came to his funeral. He was an apprentice as well. Not actually very much damage in those days. You can see Frank Gooch mending a window, but I think we were very lucky that the hirers really didn't do very much damage. Perhaps because they were shown very well how to handle the boats. <laughs> and that is Russell Newby, who was the foreman boat builder, who was actually the designer of several of the boats. And he also did his apprenticeship at Brook Marine during the war. And of course, all the boats had to be brought into the petrol quay, where they were filled up with water and petrol and gas and everything. And here we have all the groceries coming over from Routes stores on the green and all the hirers could pre-order the groceries and so they'd have all their food on board when they arrived. That's one of Ward's cruisers in the days that they were all varnished. And now they're milling about in the afternoon because the tide is too high and they can't get under the bridge. So they all have to come backwards and forwards until eventually the, the water is low enough. Most of the people who worked at Hearts in those days had all been in the Navy, which is why it was run rather like a ship. And there the launch has been out to make sure there's no other boats on the other side of the bridge and to warn them not to come through. The dinghy was one of the pram dinghies which go behind the yachts, which are much better for towing behind when you're sailing. But all of the boats would go out with a rowing or a sailing dinghy Gas, of course, was not in compartments in those days. You just stuck it in a locker on the back deck. <laughs> but things have changed since then. The cleaners look a bit posed because they knew they were being filled by my mother, so they'd all come in their best equipment and uh, all looking rather posh. But the cleaning was immaculate in those days. The lino was all polished before the customers got on board. Notice the old leather seats and cushions embroidered with Hearts Cruisers flags. There was a lot of pride in it. And my mother had flower beds on the island so that all of the boats would have a vase of cut flowers on the table as they went out. A 
And there the yacht is the three of hearts. We also had another one, the four of hearts. And they were my job on a turnaround day. I had to service them in the morning. And then it took me all afternoon to do the two trial runs where they were taken out under the bridge, masked up, and then sailing up and down on what we used to call the back reach. And then off they would go. You can see the diesel pumps on the Buck car park where it used to be a filling station as well as a pub in those days. Notice that the River Green didn't have a key heading in those days. It was all bushes and osiers with just an earth bank. The houseboat had its own garden and was also a very good holiday. Father had to have a flagpole, of course, because he was very naval and it made it look a bit more like a naval base. And you can see here the original Blake's flag without Blake's written on it because Blake's was an association of boatyards and so that's what the A flag meant. Here comes my father out of the office. All of the hirers were received in the office by my father sitting at his desk and they were each uh, looked after in that way. There was no question of having a counter like you do nowadays. Mind you, they were also received by my father if they were regular customers for drinks at lunchtime on the gunboat, in which case their trial run came a bit later in the day. And here is the moment that we all loved at the end of the day when all the boats had gone out and the day had gone well. And here you see the last boat going up the river and you know that they're all going to enjoy a good holiday.